Don't mind me guys, just a super low poly deer, ready to lead this legion of dwarfs into battle. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to another Total War Rise of Mordor online battle. Today we have the dwarves and the elves coming together, ready to face off against a pretty scary force of Eastlings and Gondor. Two very good factions, equipped with some of the strongest weapons in the game. It's going to be very interesting to see if they are capable of overthrowing the dwarves and the elves as they've put their feud aside preparing themselves for this engagement also i don't know, I really know why there is a uh where why there is a deer here it probably needs to get the head out of here because the dwarves will be marching forward maybe frandriel has let it go as his elves move forward so i'm very excited to see how this battle does turn out also before we do get started i am going to be playing in the live stream over this saturday over on the rise of mordor uh, youtube channel i'll leave a link to it down below in the description and i'll be checking it out this fi 5,000 subscriber special and I'll be checking out the brand new update that is going to be adding in the Dwarves of Kazakh Doom. So if you guys want to see some awesome new Dwarven models, make sure you go over to their YouTube, subscribe and keep an eye out for that live stream. We'll be fighting a battle. It's only going to be around about an hour and you can always catch the battle up as well uh, after the fact because their VOD will be on their, on their YouTube channel. So you want, I definitely recommend you guys go over and check that out. But let's take a quick look at the forces today. So obviously we have the Woodland Realm here on their front line. They are going to have a whole front line of of these elven spearmen a very solid unit 40 melee attack some decent melee damage but obviously that melee defense is where they're really at with that 75 armor stat so a pretty scary unit obviously again they look amazing as well it's a really good front line holding unit behind that we have a bit more of the aggressive infantry these guys have you know, obviously a lot more melee damage than their spear variant and then we also have some, uh, some archers as well. These archers are going to be very, very good. Because again, these dudes are actually half decent in melee combat as well. They can really help to shore up your front line after firing a wealth of volleys. Also, they obviously have 225 range on these bows. So they really can kind of use that elven name to their advantage and volley in very heavily. You can also see as well that the elves are really defending this right flank. They've got kind of a big hill and also a, a, a small or well, a handful of trees over here, which will obviously slow down the Eastling advance if they try and come around that flank. We obviously also do have the Elfkin Rider as well. The, uh, the Elven General is just going to be chilling. Nice and camouflaged. You, you know, you can't really see him, but Hopefully he'll come out of the, uh, the tree at some point. Obviously just staying true to his Woodland Realm uh, talk. We also have then for the Dwarves of Erebor, a front line of Dwarven Spear Guard. These guys are going to be pushing in. Also as well, another interesting thing about in the new patch as well, there's going to be a handful of new Dwarven Beards uh, being added in, which will hopefully make the Dwarven units feel a bit more unique as well. So definitely looking forward to that. Uh, we also have some Axe Guard as well who are moving into position as we speak. That's going to kind of be their main front line. They're going to be the Axe Guard and the spear guard we also have three units of the grim hammers the guys wielding these huge ass weapons right here they'll be moving in and we also have the dwarven general as well who's going to be part of the iron guard with their cool custom shields again i believe more of these type of units are going to be added to the dwarves so i think the dwarves are getting a lot of love in the uh the newer patches which is great because the dwarves are one of my favorite factions in the game we also do have some of the merchant escorts as well so again okay cavalry nothing too special the swan knights another you know of the lances and other stuff that the eastlings have will rip them apart so it's going to be the, obviously the real weakness neither the elves or the dwarves have a great cavalry advantage in any of their rosters at the moment so obviously the dwarfs shouldn't really have a good cavalry besides maybe goat cavalry you might see that one day uh but yeah i mean for the most part the elves do struggle with cavalry at least uh the woodland realm the other elven factions have a few units but yeah this is obviously still work in progresses but if we take a look at the v forces for gondor on their far right flank we do have a unit of prince coast guard these guys are basically here just to support the cavalry as best as they can reinforce that position behind that we do have two units of gondorian normal kind of just melee cavalry these guys are pretty strong if they can get themselves stuck in and then there's also a unit of their shock axe infantry on their front line they do just have five units of the gondorian swordsman one of the most iconic units i think in all of lord of the rings these guys pushing forward very nicely indeed. You can just see the entire Eastling army in the distance looking amazing. You also obviously have the Swan Knights as well as the General, the Lords of Dalmroth moving forward. And then two units of Pelagin Marines. These guys are a pretty good hybrid javelin slash melee infantry with really cool custom harpoons. Over on the far left flank for the Eastlings, again on their front line, they're going to have about five units of these Loke Rim supported by some of their warriors from the depths of the, uh, the, the Eastling lands. These Axemen look amazing and I have 
absolutely love the flags on their back. Looks so goddamn beautiful. The other unit of Loke Room Halberds, supported by some of the Lancers on the left flank as well. So let's go ahead and just go ahead and jump into this battle. You can see the Force of Gondor are really going to go in here and try and kind of take on both sides as the elves do fire off a volley, picking off one or two of the... Oh, wow, that's a really nice volley uh, for, for the elves there. Killing about... You know, six of these horses. It doesn't sound massive, but that really does add up. So, very nice ranger. You can just see the elven range really coming in clutch as the entire elven formation just gets pushed back around here. Gonna probably take up residence right there to kind of counter, uh, uh, kind of, kind of counter suppress this uh, this eastling advance that is coming in around that flank. So it seems like for the Gondor, their main goal is to basically engage the dwarves in the front line and then have the Eastling swing really far wet, uh, left and hopefully wheel in and hit the uh, hit them. However, the arrow fire is coming in and these Gondor warriors are going to be under a little bit of harassment. You know, one or two units of elven archers, hey, it can probably withstand, you know, a couple of them volleys, but, you know, as the elven ammunition just fires off, uh, you know, volley after volley after volley after volley, you're really going to start to see the casualties rack up, and the sooner the Eastlings can, uh, can, kind of, can kind of put pressure on that, the better it is going to be. As you can already see, this unit of Gondor, uh, these Gondor swords are already lost a couple men, and they're in shield wall as well, so the missile block chance goes up massively, but these volleys are, you know, really even, even in shield wall, are starting to find their ways through uh, as they continue to push on. But obviously in shield wall, I, I mean, again, it doesn't really matter if you just volley off ammunition here. It seems like this battle is going to be a very fast one once the, once the forces do engage. So I, I think just kind of getting as many shots off as you can. I highly doubt the elves are going to use all this ammunition. So yeah, just volleying off, I think is going to be pretty important. And as you can see, they've managed to kill 11 men from this Gondor, or more than that now, uh, from that, this Gondor unit. 14 men, which Again, adds up, especially when you're fighting against a faction like the uh, like the dwarves, who can do such a good job at just winning these melee engagements. However, the, these other uh, Gondor units aren't in shield wall, so I'd be inclined to maybe switch my uh, switch my volley fire. Over on this other side as well, go on slow-mo really quickly. We are seeing that the uh, the escort merchant cavalry have fully engaged here against the Gondorians. But they are going to be pulling back to the friendly parts of their line as the Eastling cavalry is coming around in the distance. We are also seeing a lot of the elven missile fire being shifted over here to try and pick down as many of these coast guards as possible. The halberds are going to be able to turn that cavalry fight just like that. So they really do want to try and pin them down. And obviously just trying to draw the enemy forces in as, look at this been positioning though. The dwarves and the elves are completely surrounded. They need to be very careful though as the Eastling Cavalry is going to be coming around and we have to hope that the players are ready for this. you just got to be braced for these cavalry charges and hopefully they will be able to see if they can form shield wall as well if they want to and the cavalry is going to come flying in here. I think they are braced just in time for this. So as you can see that cavalry charge was actually pretty deadly considering how well the uh, the blades were were prepared for that. So that charge coming in pretty devastating. But again, a lot of these elves are going to get back up. So nothing too bad from that. Going to lose a handful of men and hopefully kill a handful of these horses. Obviously, the archers at this point should all be turned around now and just peppering away against these guys. And here you go. The Eastlings are now engaging. We've got some of their halberds being thrown into position. They've got axemen over on the left-hand side as they come flying in. Looking to engage the supported by the Loke Rim, the Warlords of Rune, fully getting their blades stuck in to these heavily armoured elves. So a perfect unit there with more of the Shock Infantry just advancing off in the distance. Another really exciting thing as well that's coming in the new patch is apparently they've got a new lighting system working in the game. I think it's very much like the Thrones of Britannia light lighting system, which is awesome. Uh, so it sh the game should be a lot brighter and shouldn't be as dark as it is. Like if I if I look from uh, from this side, like look how dark the game suddenly becomes. Like you can barely see what's going on. Whereas if you look at it like this, look how bright it looks. It's just a tiller lighting things. And hopefully that's something they are going to be fixing or at least improving in a future patch that is going on. So here we go. The battle lines have fully clashed. A massive cavalry engagement out here as the Dwarven Cavalry. It just seems like they're getting absolutely sandwiched. The cavalry from the Eastlings have engaged them from the front. And I can only assume these knights are going to become flying in. Maybe not though. Maybe they've realized they don't need to. And they're going to push in here. Maybe try and take out one of the enemy generals. Or even just go into the back of the, the infantry here. Either, kind of, either of these options are going to be very beneficial to them. 
And I think, yeah, going into the back of here will be very deadly. The dwarfs, the axe guard have engaged and they are preparing themselves, I think, to withstand a pretty gnarly cavalry charge. However, the elven general is running interference, retreating out of this combat, going to be losing a handful of soldiers as he does and just looking to stop this cavalry from getting in. Yeah, they, can get, they can stop the majority of this cavalry from getting, they even managed to pick away at the Knights of the Silver Swan, which is huge. Just tying these guys down that little bit of extra time is um, ma massively important. However, some cavalry has somehow managed to get its way into the battle lines and hit the elven forces in the rear, which is really not good. Seemingly, they are going to be struggling uh, pretty heavily. And again, on the front line, these, these spears are going to be doing a great job at holding the front line, but not going to be able to do a great job at killing. And it seems like the Eastings have really been able to push a lot of their force. I mean, just look how dense their battle line is compared to the elves. They are really being pushed in with more cavalry coming in, uh, which are obviously the perfect charge into these disorganized elven lines. You can just see the devastating hit right there. And then into the archers as well. So the elves are really struggling. Obviously, they're able to kind of get this fight under control in a more prolonged engagement. Oh, and we also have some knights of the silver swan as well. I really like it as well how Gondor haven't engaged their front line against the dwarves. Generally, they are going to uh, lose that fight, you know, 50 times, you know, I don't know, like 70, 80% of the time head on against the dwarves. Um, however, by kind of really pressuring the Woodland Realm and then kind of just playing very passive here against the Gondorans, you're going to be kind of focusing more on the flanks and not engaging where you might actually lose. I do say that vote. Obviously, this is a spear guard on the front line, so honestly not vote the worst thing in the world. However, as you can start to see, some of the Eastling Cavalry that have broken their way into the battle line uh, are now starting to break just under the sheer pressure of the just the strength that is the Woodland Realm. The infantry able to really kind of just hold their own even after being bombarded by cavalry. You also can see a very nice setup here. From the Easterlings. Obviously, them banners being held high in the sky. But a very, very thin battle line. Some of the Easterlings have already broken through on this section and actually have created a pretty nice pocket that they can push more soldiers through if they wanted to. So we'll have to see if that does expand. You can see the, uh, the Elven commander there helping out on them front lines, fighting with his men. The Loke Rim as well doing a very, very good job. Such a reliable unit. Them Halberds holding very firm. However, the Elves are taking down some of these soldiers on the front line as more do get committed. But it's just when the gaps will start to show, that is when the Eastlings will pounce. And we get a nice little overview as well and speed back up the camera. You can just see more cavalry coming into the back. Again, these dwarves were in shield wall, so you see how much more effective they are at defending against some cavalry charges when your units are in shield wall. They really do uh, not take that much damage and they can really repel them. Again, over here as well, lines are a little bit thin and this time the Gondorian cavalry tears right through them. And even though the dwarves are very dense, their formation's struggling. You need to really, really form. And just, yeah, the, the superiority of having this cavalry is going to be, you know, just throwing the bath balance power heavily in favor of the forces of Gondor and the Eastlings. That cavalry advantage is going to really pay dividends. And you can start to see this flank just under just immense pressure. I can't believe how many men the Eastlings do have compared to the elves. Like, I know the elves are expensive, but my god, this flank is very close to a... Uh, to breaking in and you are going to see a lot of soldiers moving in i guess these five units of archers are very expensive and haven't really got their money's worth in this battle and that's what you do see very often in these more competitive matches as missiles not really paying for themselves uh, and many people end up not bringing them because they're better in for more prolonged engagements and generally in these organized battles it's very hard to keep your units uh keep your units uh, on the field and the enemy obviously will just rush you and may notice that you have this many archers and obviously a lot of this missile these missile forces could have been put into more cavalry and other stuff like that not that i think the woodland realm actually have access to a lot of cavalry so that's obviously one of the other reasons we are getting more lancers just lobbing their way through the uh, gaps that the elves have created 
And you really start to see the Eastlings just flying soldiers through. The cavalry still pretty much untouched. And this new box that has been formed is just being hammered line after line. More cavalry running through the gaps and immediately going into the back lines of the dwarfs. Helping the Gondorian allies to take down the foes and take what is theirs in the mountain. Or what they claim to be theirs. It will be theirs after this battle. Gondor will get a hefty amount of the gold of Erebor. And as you can see, this cavalry is just moving in. Even though the dwarves are trying their best to pin it down, the ability to move in on this mosh pit that has been created is just unmatched by the forces. You can even see some of the elven spears being completely surrounded. No, no escape whatsoever as the warlords of rune just smash into them their backs with them huge glaives a very deadly force indeed and these pockets of elves just don't really stand a chance at this point in the battle um the dwarves are still fighting hard obviously but with cavalry in their midst pushing in at every known position where there's a gap there's a unit of gondorian cavalry and even with these reinforcements I just don't think the uh, the defenders or say the dwarfs have much chance. You've got a unit of elven archers here as well. Able to push in and, and help out. This is actually the general unit. Able to point blank volley into the Gondor and Cab. That's pretty nice. It's going to take down a handful of them. The more of these guys they can kill. Another point blank volley. And I think that's something definitely the archers needed to try and do more. I know it was extremely hard to do so. Uh, but yeah, these archers needed to try and just kind of even out the cavalry at the disadvantage they had by just volleying in whenever the cavalry came close just fire two three volleys in because not only does that obviously take out a few horses it also disrupts their charge as well some units get hit by the archers but don't die but it slows them up and disrupts the charge meaning that they're going to be a lot less impactful and unfortunately yeah unfortunately we are seeing just a complete annihilation of the woodland realm there is very little they can do. Some dwarves pushing off, but unfortunately just being, uh, you know, given the old cat and mouse as these javelins volley in against them. As one unit just turns and gets pre prepared to, to volley back as well. Basically just leaving them on a wild goose chase as the rest of the ranks do come up. And I mean, just my god, there are thousands of Easterlings here. Just descending upon these poor, poor elven units. And honestly, this is going to be a pretty decisive victory for the uh, for the elves. Sorry, for the elf they wish. For the Gondorians and Easterlings. The mountain will be theirs. And realistically, it came down to a lot, I think, about just this cavalry. I'm having this much of the cavalry advantage really paid dividends and uh, you know again when you have such a big cavalry disadvantage it's so important that you have like but you make you let your opponent make the first move of the cavalry you know the cavalry fight should have really been like taken on like here so that you could send your reserves a lot more efficiently and they'd have to go all the way around and obviously have to worry about being engaged by your infantry to have that fight happen that's like my my biggest tip whenever you're fighting a total war battle where you've got a big cavalry disadvantage let the enemy overextend their horses and then engage because if they move in ill supported you can then pounce get your infantry involved quicker and help turn that tide but obviously it's not always easy to make that happen Sometimes it can be very, very difficult. And yeah, then five units of archers just allow the Eastlings to just completely overwhelm with just pure strength of arms. And even the Dwarven front lines are struggling. Yeah, even the Dwarven front lines are having a hard time. I think as well, another good tip, I think, for the guys who lost this battle would be to have them spears not on the front line. Again, when you're running that cavalry disadvantage, I think if they were to have the spears defending this back line here they would have been able to withstand the cavalry charges again a lot more effectively because their swords were braced but even still they ended up getting dis you know, disorganized kind of quickly uh, and i think obviously if they would have had spears back there they could have obviously punished the enemy cavalry a little bit more these poor dwarfs surrounded by cavalry infantry axes you name it the dwarfs are fighting onto the last man so you've got to respect that or the last dwarf i should say A pretty decisive victory, honestly. You can also get a good look at the dwarfs over on this side as well. Unfortunately, being completely outranged by the, uh, the Coast Guard here. 
with them halberds. The spears just aren't able to really close the distance. Oh my god, look at that one soldier there holding his stomach. God damn. Brutal sometimes, Attila can be. As the dwarves try their best to get stuck in, but... Yeah, how many men are left of them? There's only a minute left of the battle. Only 300 dwarves. There's over 2,000 of the other side still left remaining. 2,300. That is crazy. This was an absolute slaughter. A massacre, unfortunately. And yeah, that cavalry. I'm excited to see how many kills the cavalry are going to get at the end of this battle. We can stick on triple speed now and just let it kind of run down as more and more of the dwarves get kind of smashed in. Uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see how much kills the cavalry got. I mean, again, the Eastling infantry would be very good as well. Uh, something to keep in mind as well when we do look at the final kill count in a second. Uh, obviously, they will be smaller because the elves are a very elite army, so they, they generally have less soldiers in their armies. Uh, same with the dwarves as well. Uh, they're again, kind of still not a bit of a middle ground, but uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see how many kills. If we take a look at the, the numbers to begin the battle with, you can see that the allied uh, man, man count is over 1,300 or just under 1,300 more soldiers uh, than the dwarves had. And then numbers really came in clutch towards the end of this battle. So a close victory. I mean, I would say that was a decisive victory, if, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, and yeah, the cavalry getting very good kills. Four units of these lancers. Um, and you can just see how much they outclass. I imagine the Gondorians as well. Yeah, they, they, oh, they brought five units of cavalry. My god, that's a lot. That really, really is. Um, and whereas, if you take a look at the elves, yeah. I don't think the elves have access to any cavalry besides the Elkin Riders. I think this is the only horse unit they have, uh, which is a shame. But still, uh, you know, the dwarfs maybe could have brought a couple more, but they really obviously wanted to invest heavily on these Grim Hammers who, you know, ended up getting 214 kills. Very nice. Yeah, so I, I think maybe just investing a little bit more in cavalry. Uh, the Woodland Realm always, always struggles, but obviously getting more spearmen instead of these archers would have also been pretty valuable because the archers just did not get their value towards the end of that. They brought, what, five units of these, including the general... And unfortunately, they just could not make them pay for themselves. So a couple more units of spearmen would have helped kind of uh, kind of like hit off the, the top of the cavalry disadvantage they had. And they could have maybe have got a few more engaged. But anyway, massive GG to both players, or all four players. Uh, it was a very good game. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and send me any replays you get on Rise of Mordor, make sure you do so over on my Discord. As I said, I will be taking a look at the brand new Kazakh Doom faction this Saturday over on the Rise of Mordor YouTube channel, along with three other YouTubers. Uh, so make sure you go ahead and check that out and I'll see you guys in the next one